Okay, we're going to install the uh, rear uh, brake system uh, on the left-hand side of the car. Um, it's important to remember uh, your sh your shims. These shims go on here to uh, adjust the uh, end play of the rear axle. Uh, usually, that's all been set up at the factory. Uh, just keep track of how many shims are on each side when you disassemble a car. On this car, we had two shims on the left-hand side and one shim on the driver's side. So we've got to make sure that we've got those uh, ready to go. And we like to seal these shims to the backing plate and the axle. Uh, because what's going to happen is that there's uh, grease gear oil from the transmission that wants to leak out of this bearing. That's how this bearing is lubricated from the lube inside the axle from the pumpkin. And uh, there is a seal uh, here in the backing plate that we have installed um, to help keep the grease out of the brake system. Uh, but grease can still leak around the shims and drip down uh, and make a mess outside the backing plate. Uh, the way to do this make sure everything's clean. Everything's been cleaned up here. The uh, Flange on the axle housing has been cleaned up. Apply, uh, we prefer uh, Permatex, uh, so-called Ultra Black, uh, to seal uh, against grease and oil. Uh, some people are still stuck on the Permatex Blue RTV. Uh, the blue will not stand up to uh, oil and grease, uh, and it will just uh, leak right through it. It'll dissolve it and leak through it. So that's not the solution. Now we have two of these we have to do. And this time we only have to do one surface because that surface has already got sealer. This is Permatex Ultra Black gasket maker. Uh, there is a plain black RTV, which again will not stand up to grease and oil and it will just leak. Now it doesn't matter if I have any on the other side. I still have left, some left on my fingers, so I might as well go ahead and use it up. This stuff does make quite the mess. Uh, we have sealant applied everywhere. Um, we're going to go ahead and mount the backing plate. Now when we do that, uh, we have a groove for the a keyway right here for the axle, for the axle key. Um, this has sharp edges and could potentially cut uh, this lip seal. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, one method to avoid that from happening and please notice that whenever you have a lip seal uh, the side of the seal that has the spring garter around the seal goes toward the pressure side uh, of whatever it is you're working on so the, gar the side with the garter spring is going to go inboard Now there are probably any number of ways to protect the seal from the edges of the keyway. A quick and dirty method is to just cut yourself some Q-tips. An alternative way would be as if uh, I had 
a plastic uh, key that was just the right size to go in here, but I don't have anything like that. Really doesn't matter what you use. As long as you do something. And I don't want that seal to rub onto the axle directly. It is going to get some lubrication from the differential housing here as we already described, but I need to get it started off on the right foot. So we're just gonna put a little bit of grease like so. A brand that we like is Staplex Premium Red Extreme Pressure Grease by Staylube. Uh, Staylube uh, is a good product. This is part of the CRC Corporation Chemical Rubber Company, uh, and they make very high quality products. So once again, this is the uh, picture of the Permatex product. Uh, it's called Ultra Black Gasket Maker Oil Resistant. This is the only thing we have in the shop. We don't have any of the blue RTV. We don't have any of the black RTV. This is the way to go. If you use the blue or the black RTV, I guarantee you that you will be doing it over. Get some lock washers on here. It's always a good idea to lay out all your parts ahead of time. And we really don't want these backing plate nuts to loosen up, so we're going to do a belt and suspenders kind of a deal. Uh, we have, uh, after all, this backing plate is what holds the uh, rear brake shoes. Uh, so we're going to put not only the lock washers on these studs, but we're also going to put some Loctite. Now there are several grades of Loctite. We might have covered this before, but what we prefer is Loctite 243. You're going to have to get this online. For some reason, the automotive supply shops do not have this. They have 242, which is blue, uh, which the, the, the blue, the two blues, 242 and 243, can be removed with just regular hand tools. The red, the 271, uh, you have got to heat that up with the torch or else it's not going to break free. But the 242 is just not as strong. I think somehow or other the formula has been weakened over the years. Um, 
Uh, and now, really, the premier blue to get is the 243, if you want it to work. The sole purpose of this backing plate is to support the brake shoes uh, and to resist rotating motion when the brake is applied. So uh, this is an important piece of hardware back here. Now you notice that the correct methodology for tightening up uh, in a situation like this is do not tighten one, all the, one of these bolts or nuts all the way first. You tighten them evenly or else you will warp the plate. I guarantee it. And then I can't really tell tightness very well from without a torque wrench. Uh, the cordless impacts are very very nice to have for speed but the muscle memory in my arms tells me how tight these things are really supposed to be you could use a torque wrench you would not be wrong but if you've worked on any number of cars at all then you come to find out you come to learn what's an acceptable torque by hand. You're not trying to go animal on it. That will get you in trouble. And you notice I keep going around as the whole unit begins to become one with the axle. Now it's time to put the wheel cylinder in. Now we're very fond of using Never Seas in this shop. Um, we spent untold amount of labor and dollars trying to undo all the rusting and such that's been going on with this vehicle for the last 74 years. And we've re we're restoring it. We're putting it all back together again. Um, someday, somebody is going to have to service this vehicle. Uh, uh, and they would probably rather not have to run into the same uh, gigantic pile of rust that we ran into. And if you think about it, um, the somebody that might want to service the vehicle again later on could be us. So, at the very least, we're doing ourselves a favor. Uh, some people have asked why I wear these black sleeves. It just so happens uh, that my forearms bruise very, very easily. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, I'm not part of a cult or anything like that.
Now, going animal on these small quarter inch bolts would be very, very non-productive. Uh, and they just don't need much torque at all. And if you break these off in the casting of the wheel cylinder, you are gonna have a bad day. So again, uh, some experience here helps and muscle memory in your arms to tell you how much torque you have applied. Okay, now comes the, uh, the brake pins. These just insert into the uh, boots here on the cylinder. That's better. Uh, you can see that there is <clears throat> a notch here. You want the lip of the rubber cup to <clears throat> fit into that notch. This is, uh, these rubber cups are a dust cup. This is another situation <clears throat> where we'll employ never sees. Never sees is also a lubricant. Soto had these felts on here uh, that would hold uh, motor oil uh, to lubricate these pivots. Um, that's an ancient technology. They didn't have never sees back then.
Try not to get any kind of grease or oil or other contamination on the linings of the brake shoes. That will reduce the coefficient of friction and your brakes won't work anywhere near as well as you would like them to. Now with this DeSoto system, these bolts that hold the shoes on <clears throat> have arrows on them and for the rear brakes with the single cylinder like this, uh, you want the arrows to be facing each other. I want you to notice that there is an eccentric, <clears throat> there's an eccentric cam on these bolts and watch what happens when I turn this, it repositions the shoes. This is part of the brake adjusting system. We will get into that in more detail later. Right now, my only goal is to get them mounted. Use a 5 8 wrench out here, 7 8 behind, and again, I'm not trying to accomplish adjustment, I just want to get the process started. Do want both arrows facing each other at this point in time, which you can see uh, they are. Now comes the real fun. We need to put this brake return spring in place. These can be a bit of a challenge. You really, really, really need to have brake spring pliers. Um, as weird as they look, you'll see how they're going to be used in a minute. Um, and I have opened, there. it's a hook on each end. I have opened up this hook just a tiny bit with the vice grips like so. Because I'm going to have, otherwise I'm going to have trouble catching this hold. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to hook onto the spring and this little tip here is going to dig into the lining. Um, some people are going to scream and holler and say, oh, you're making a hole in the lining. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It's not that big a deal. You have a little itty bitty divot, which is not going to affect anything. Open this up a little bit more.
Should do it. And there you have all of the components mounted for the rear brake system. Uh, thanks for watching.